guys, so thanks for coming along today. Um, my name is Kyle Dixon, and I'm doing my presentation on uh, questions and coaching today. So um, pretty much for me, I don't have a lot of, I guess, experience with this, so I'm, that's kind of the reason why I picked this topic, is to work on this skill as well. So I'll be learning with you guys as well today and, and working on it with you guys as well today. So um, just to give some more personal background about myself, um, I've been a basketball player for uh, 18 years now. Um, played at different levels. I uh, played college levels in the States and now uh, professional over here. Um, back in the States, I do uh, skills training with uh, pretty much 10 year olds to about 18 year olds, uh, just basketball training. And then uh, I'm also, I've been a youth coach, so I've coached at the high school level a little bit and then in uh, coaching uh, camps as well. So, um, you know, just college camps with, with youth athletes. Um, and then I'm now over here working for an organization called Sport Changes Life, where I work with a really wide range of um, age groups and individuals. So all the way from, could be elementary school kids all the way up to uh, nursing home adults. So with a wide range of, or a wide variety of sports. So just to give you guys some background of kind of where questioning falls within coaching. Um, so there's always been basically an approach to coaching um, that is the coach-centered, which is that instruct and tell the athlete you know, what to do, and there's not a lot of feedback. It's more of a one-way relationship where that relationship is focused on the coach. Um, and in this relationship, most of the time, the coach is gonna determine the goals and gonna determine the solutions to problems and issues. Um, so, and they're also going to be, in this type of approach, the focus is going to be on winning and success. So now, and more recently, where um, these coaching philosophies and coaching has kind of moved towards, is more towards an athlete-centered approach. So the focus is going to be, as you can see by the name, focus on the athlete themselves and hol holistically. Um, so, in this type of style, Essentially, the coach is going to be asking the athlete questions, and it's going to be a two-way relationship where you're going to have a lot of communication and feedback going both ways. Uh, this ultimately is going to allow for the athlete to determine their goals. It's going to allow for the athlete to come up with their own solutions, think critically, essentially. Um, it's going to help them with their learning, and it's also going to help with them develop holistically as a person, which for a lot of coaches I feel like is an important thing. So now that we have a better understanding of where kind of questions come from with that athlete-centered approach versus that coach-centered approach, uh, these are just some learning objectives for today when we're focusing on questions themselves. So we're gonna first look at the importance of asking questions versus um, telling an athlete essentially what to do. And then we're gonna move towards figuring out the types of questions that are really important and um, that we wanna ask. And then after that, we're gonna put it into our sports context. So um, right now, I basically just kind of want you guys to go ahead and uh, have a discussion with a partner, or if you guys just want to do like you three and, and you two, <coughs> have a little discussion of why you guys think um, questions are important and basically the role that they can play in learning for an athlete. So I'm just gonna give you guys probably about four or five minutes with that and we'll see what comes out of it. Yeah, if you guys want to maybe write, write down as well, or I just have a list in your head as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
we were chatting about Australia, but you're surprised how much they actually know. Oh, I know. I mean, I still think it's like, well, I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, it's a great point. I didn't even think about that. Like, you also look at it as well with um, sort of with basically what we're really going to help with the athlete as well in developing them. Yeah. So the you know what it's going to um, you know encourage them to think more for whatever it is as well. So with that as well, when you think of it, how does that affect it? So.
comparison, open to any response would be eliciting more of a um, longer response than just a one word response. Um, it's going to promote dialogue with you and your athletes. Um, it's going to have them thinking about solutions and, and different things like that. Um, so basically, in, in coaching, it's um, it's extremely important to be using open ended questions to basically enhance that that good communication with your athletes and develop that relationship with your athletes. So uh, just another ac activity I was gonna ha have you guys do, um, you know, I'm gonna throw up just a list of questions essentially. Um, and I just want you guys to list them as um, either effective or not effective. Or not effective. Um, so can we all see this list here? Or do I need to make it bigger? Yeah. You guys just want to list it, maybe on a piece of paper or something like that? Good with that? Great. Yeah, so it goes. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So basically, the uh, the second part of this task now is basically to look at those same questions, um, mainly just the um, not effective ones, and then how could we change those questions and reformulate them to be more of an effective question? Um, and you could even like you can argue that with some of the even like effective questions, possibly as well, you could even formulate even. Um, but there's, there's some on there, for instance, you know, like, uh, can I help you with that? That's going to be usually a yes or a no. You know, depending on your athlete, it's, it's usually going to be a yes or a no. Um, uh, other ones as well, did you, did you want to learn that? Yes or no. You know, that, that's going to be not a very effective question, whereas 
Um, you know, some some other questions such as um, let's see here. Um, what do you want to achieve? That's going to elicit a much more um, a, a bigger, uh, I guess, uh, response from them, and it's going to basically pull that bigger response out of them. So, uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and look back at the uh, not effective questions that you guys listed, and if you guys could just go ahead and try to like reformulate those, or maybe just have a little bit of a discussion with it. Because that's the goal, I mean, it must be the case, yes or no, to make it uh, for us. And so, really, you want to look at the community. It could be a community like that, you know, for us. Um, what we can do. It's fun. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, what's one of the challenges? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and then also with time it could be something as simple potentially as you know when do you think the best time would be to do this option or this option um, but yeah so those are basically just the main types of questions that we're looking for in sports um, you know you don't have to always start those questions with how they are um, but that's just the, the general gist of it um, so now moving on to our next activity then um, this is where we're going to kind of apply those skills with our, uh, our coaching context and coaching practice. So, um, yeah, to me, we can just even switch up the groups then. Um, so if we want to just go maybe two on the ends and then three in the middle or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, once we do that, basically all we're gonna do is, we're just gonna have, um, I kind of want you guys to all think back to a, uh, maybe a time in your either playing career or coaching career when you might have you know, made a mistake or something like that, something that you're fine with talking about. Um, and all I want you, your partner to do, or you, know, you guys in this where you can, uh, you can be his partner and then you, know, you can flip around. Um, basically all I, want, all I want to happen is the partner just to basically ask open-ended questions to the person about that, you know, that mistake or maybe possibly a problem they're having, um, just something like that along those lines, just to essentially work on our open-ended question skills. Um, and then we'll essentially be able to apply these same skills when we're, you know, working with athletes. So, um, if, yeah, if you just want to have a couple minute conversation, um, doesn't have to be anything too, too long, but yeah, if you guys just want to go ahead and crack on with that, yep. Yeah, that or even, even just like me, a problem you're having or something like that with, with coaching or something like that.
just switch the roles now, so the other person's kind of asking the questions um, and, and, and practicing that skill as well now. Yeah, you guys are having a good conversation, sorry to interrupt it, but yeah. Yeah, you want to switch those roles? Mm -hmm. So not to interrupt again or anything, sorry, but um, basically just kind of want to get some feedback with, with how you guys found that. Um, I mean, with like conversations you had with your athletes, I mean, how does, how does it compare? Have you seen like a difference with open-ended versus, you know, closed-ended and stuff like that with, with your athletes? It's harder, harder to believe the skull. Yeah, yep. You know, it's really hard picking a question which doesn't elicit just a quiet. Yeah. Short answer, and then once you, if you don't think right, your first question, if like say James just says yeah, mm -hmm. then you're instantly in the back foot. Yeah. Because if he just says yeah, uh, well, if he's talking, that allows you to think of your next question. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it does affect the flow. Yep. You know, even in terms of your initial question mm -hmm. being very key. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they, you know, if you want to do something with a player and it just comes back there, <coughs> you just look all right. <laughs> And you completely just lose your own sort of and I think that's also where like it, it can be kind of looked at as well with like the relationship that you end up having with the athlete then and like the I guess the depth of that relationship and how close that relationship is then you know if you're just constantly asking them you know those closed-ended questions stuff like that versus those open-ended questions I mean how much are you really learning about them you know as a person and how much are you going to really be able to I guess better coach them if 
you are asking those them those open ended questions. Right. And I think like for things to be as important and that um, the time you have with them, whatever you're delivering the session, you start asking those, it's it's gonna eat into the stuff you plan to do. Yeah. It's, it's almost conversations you have to try and have outside yeah. the the training time, do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. but for me I find that hard to get that mm -hmm. time with them. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's actually, um, it's actually a good segue for uh, the next thing that I was actually gonna talk about with this is um, with questions, it can be very situational when you can apply this. Um, you know, with different sports, you're not always going to be able to take the time to ask the athlete a question and, you know, get their feedback and have a long conversation with them. Um, you know, for instance, I guess in my context, you know, basketball, you're gonna have sometimes a timeout, you're gonna have 30 seconds to, to talk to an athlete, and uh, in that 30 seconds, I don't really necessarily think you have time to, to ask the athlete, you know, and have this long conversation with them. Where, whereas in that, you know, 30 seconds, you might have to be more strictly advice driven. And I'm sure with, with your guys' sports as well, it can be like that. Um, so yeah, that, that's the situational piece of it. Um, the other consideration as well, uh, beside that is it's called uh, initiate response evaluation. So essentially what this is, is the athlete has a response that has kind of been like trained in them by the coach and that they think that the coach wants to hear. So it also, we have to be kind of cognizant of that as well, is that making sure we ask the question that they're actually critically thinking and trying to find a solution for themselves and kind of coming up with new solutions versus just telling us kind of, you know, what we have always heard and kind of might want to hear. So moving forward with that, uh, the, just in conclusion, um, so basically this questioning approach comes from the athlete-centered approach that has now become more favored in coaching today. Um, the most important aspect of it is just kind of gaining player feedback and having a more two-way relationship with the athlete, which ultimately allows for um, them to be empowered and developed more holistically. Besides that, yeah, that's 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 me. Do uh, you guys have any questions or anything? I wonder if um, you can retrospect about how you felt about you know there is that in between where if you're asking a player, you know what they think, and you work with young players, they can feel quite awkward. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's you know the balance of mm -hmm. at what point do you you know would you move on if you know what I mean, or what do you sort of think? Yeah, I think it's that it's, it's that situational, like just kind of understanding the athlete that you're working with and understanding the age group that you're working with. Um, you know, with older athletes, you might be able to have more of a dialogue with them about a situation or something like that. They might have a better understanding. So maybe um, at younger ages, it might be better to be more instructing and you know teaching them the game and stuff like that. Whereas when they get older and they have a better understanding of the game, then it's kind of asking and having them critically think. Um, so it is it is that like, that fine line, you know, I don't really know where that, that age range really is at, where you, you know, should really start really just asking questions. Um, but I mean, I think it's definitely part of that maturation process for the athlete and helping them develop holistically, yeah. 